Yeah, and if, if you notice that mechanism of denial and repression, you know, what it does is it's, it's a, a way that the ego uses to hold on to secrets and private thoughts. You know, you can, you can smile, you can put on a happy face, you can have the stiff upper lip, you can try to maintain a facade of dignity and peace. You can even have a pride about, you know, about wearing, about peace and equality and all these things on the surface. But if you've got this churning undercurrent that's down underneath, that the, the young called the shadow, or we could call the, the unconscious mind, and until that is exposed and released, then what happens on the surface will be highly unstable. You know, you can have, you know, you have England here with Shakespeare and, I mean, it just goes on and on and on uh, about, you know, dignity and clarity, some of the most representations of clear-minded thinking. You know, Shakespeare is just amazing when you get into it and this and that. And then you have a country like Britain that was one, like with Napoleon, Britain's invaded a lot of countries. Uh, I was here recently and uh, the guy who was driving me around up in Birmingham when I came for a conference, he's like, his name is Martin, he said, well, we have really invaded a lot of countries. We are really aggressive, you know, we're passive aggressive, you know, and it's funny, he was talking to me all about that. Then I got back to the States and and I saw this book online where this little boy asked his father, uh, how many countries have, have, has England, have we invaded? And the, the father couldn't even, he thought, I can't even give him a, a solid answer, I'll just research it. The more the father looked into it, he was like, how many countries have we not invaded? He couldn't, <laughs> couldn't even go at it from the point of invasion because it was invaded so many. Once it got up over a hundred and something, he was like, oh, <laughs> well, what countries can I tell my son we haven't invaded? You know, like, keep it a little simpler. And, but that's, a, a, again, passive-aggressive. You know, it's, if, if the repression and the not denial is so strong and you don't get in touch with it and you don't let it up and out, you don't heal it, then it takes, it can take aggressive overturns. And he was talking too about the United States, I said, yeah, it's, it's done its share and so forth. Then you go to a place like Bali, which you've been to Bali recently, and I've, I've been to Bali. I landed in Bali and I went up to Jam's ashram and he wasn't there either when I was there. See, we have commonalities. Uh, they said, here's his bathtub. I'm actually pretty dirty. I think I'm going to take a bath and change it. I don't think he even knows it, but you know, we're, we're all the same. So I go in there, took a bath while they were discussing a few things, and, and then I, I go out uh, and I go to the grocery store to get some groceries, and I got a little heart-shaped candy from the cashier at the grocery store, and a namaste from the cashier. And I thought, oh yeah, these are my people. <laughs> it was so soft. Uh, you probably had that same experience. It's mostly Hindu, very, very soft and light there. And then, you know, you go to other places like with China. I told the whole story about you know the passive aggressive. They said, oh yeah, well we're not we're not so much like Britain. We killed, we invade each other. Uh, we, <laughs> we study all the dynasties. We just attack and invade each other. We don't invade other countries. We just invade, invade, and kill, and kill, and kill, and kill, and kill. You know, again, passive aggressive. You know, like the movie we watch. Aggressive, <coughs> adversarial. <laughs> not baseball, but you know, wiping out people that don't agree with you. This has to end when you bring the unconscious, the shadow, up into the light. And then you can see that these thoughts aren't real. They're not your real thoughts. You feel guilt when you hold on to them and try to hide and protect them. Why would you hide and protect something that isn't even real unless you believe it is real and it's so nasty that you want it pushed out of awareness? That's what suppression and denial are about. It's pushing out of awareness that which is unacceptable unacceptably violent, unacceptably cruel, unacceptably evil, and then the Holy Spirit says, come on, bring them up, bring them up, and give them to me, and I will show you that they're not real, that you had a world of much to do about nothing, and you had all these emotional dramas, and all these things going on, 
but it's not real. It's not a real conflict. When you keep the conflict hidden from the light, it's just like if you had a wound and you kept it, you never let it get any air, and you never let it get any sunlight, you know, it would delay the healing of the wound. It's the same with the mind. If you keep everything pushed down and out of awareness, then you delay the healing of letting those thoughts up and out. So, some people get into spirituality as just an intellectual thing, they want to write books, do workshops, da da da. We're into true healing, healing in mind. We take this very practically, and when we go into a country or a culture, that was just a good example of, there was such a strong willingness that there was huge amounts of healing occurring. It was almost palpable, you could just feel it happening, it was so strong. And again, I just go where there's a strong call, and it just kind of, oh, the go to China came in.